All right, so in this one, we're gonna set up our Django project to be able to send email. Um, this might change from time to time, so I definitely recommend that you take a look at the djangoproject.com for this in particular. The things that are probably gonna change aren't really Django specific, but more of the settings um, using SM SMTP hosts and your email settings. And this one, we're gonna talk about using Gmail itself to send. Um, so other things like SendGrid is another one for transactional email. Uh, you can read more about what kind of email things that you'll need to do. And then there's also other kinds of backends too. So if you look at email backends, there's different ones that you'd be able to use. But Gmail is fairly straightforward and easy to do. Um, so without further ado, let's actually go ahead and do that. Open up Sublime Text and we're gonna go into our settings.py. And at the very top, right under allowed hosts, I'm gonna go ahead and put in email host, and I'm gonna set my email host to the Gmail one, which is smtp.gmail.com, and then email host user equals to your Gmail email at gmail.com, and then email host password equals to your password, and then email port equals to 587. And email use TLS equals to true. So these are the only settings that you actually have to set. Of course, you need a real email address and you need a real password for this to work. Uh, otherwise, there will be errors in actually reaching your account. One other thing that you wanna note is using Gmail, you might have to unlock CAPTCHA for it to work long-term, especially if you put it on a server that Gmail does not necessarily recognize. So we have a nice little link here that we'll put in the code uh, to allow you to do that. But if you just Google unlock Gmail CAPTCHA, you'll find it for you. Uh, Django, it's not Django specific, it is for all types of things. But uh, if you do this, make sure it's probably not your personal email address. I wouldn't recommend doing that anyway, but using a personal email address anyway. Um, but make sure that since it's, if it's an unlocked CAPTCHA, that means that security is a little bit down. Uh, it's downgraded just a little bit, enough to where if it was your personal email, you probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, although Google is still very strong with their security, so even doing this is not really gonna hurt you. It's just gonna allow your server to actually work with your Gmail on a different level. Um, so there's that, and then of course, they probably have more documentation on Gmail itself to learn about that specifically. Uh, but now that we have this, all we have to do is actually go into our view or wherever we want to send an email and use the email sending function that Django provides for us, which we can look at the documentation for it. It gives us an example right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this example and I'll paste it at the very top. And then I'm gonna cut out the send mail part and we'll worry about that in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and get send mail and I'm gonna put it into our contact form. This makes a lot more sense than um, maybe our home or our home form where they actually fill out the newsletter. We might wanna put it here too, but um, for us, we're just gonna put it in the contact form and um, go ahead and comment out all this. And I'm gonna keep these things right here, like what we had before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do send mail. And send mail takes a few different parameters, so we'll discuss those. First one being subject message from email. The from email is gonna be the email that you are sending from. Um, so not like in a contact form, it's not gonna be their email. And that's this right here. So that's the from user. So you can use that, um, that specific setting if you'd like to use that setting. We'll do that in a second. So first off, I'll just type out subject and then I'll say from. So from email. Of course, we'll have to set these at some point. And then, oh, excuse me, we have to put the message to uh, contact message. Let's not get the contact message confused with the form message uh, or the email message confused with the form message. And then from email and then to email would be a list of emails, so to email. So you can have a whole list of emails here and I'm just gonna leave just one email and then fail silently. This is kind of a big one. Um, fail silently is important because in a contact form, in this case, we probably wouldn't want it to fail silently. So we'll say false, right? Um, but if we actually save this data in our database, then we would probably say true. 
So it's really going to depend on what the form is and what you want to happen here. Um, so fail silently will run a server error. If it does not fail silently, it will run a server error and we'll see what that looks like here in just a moment because our email is actually going to fail because uh, we don't have a proper email set up. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and set our subject. Subject equals to uh, site contact form or something of those lines, contact form. Uh, from email, I'll worry, worry the contact message in just a second. From email, we want to get it from the settings file. Right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to rewrite this over and over again. So to do that, we just import our settings. So we come to the top here and go from django.conf import settings. Um, this allows you to grab anything from settings. So if you needed the email host user or you need the email host or you need the installed apps, you can you can pretty much grab anything from settings by using this right here. So now coming back down from email is settings dot uh, it's email host user. Make sure it's all caps like that. That is also very important on settings. You want to make sure it's all caps and exactly like this. Um, so now we've got our from user, right? So that's our from email. And then our to email. In this case, our to email is going to go to our same from email um, because we wanted to send it to us or you would send it to a list of people if you'd like. So let's actually turn this into a list instead. So to email will be a list of emails. So I'll say from email and then like your other email at email.com. So now we have a list of these. You probably wouldn't respond directly to this user with this send mail. Um, all right, now we wanna worry about the contact message. So contact message could be done a few ways. So contact message equals to, well, we could just do string substitution and that's probably gonna be the easiest thing to do. And we just do percent s and then we would just say percent s so i'm just going to say full name and then their message and so percent and then we do their full name would be full name and then their message so this actually gives us their contact message oh we probably want to say via their email address too we probably would want that so then we put this in here and put email so um, we might want to change these variables to make it a little bit easier to understand. So we'll say uh, our form email and then form message and form full name just to give a little bit better description of these things. Otherwise, you might lose some. Uh, I mean, it might be a little confusing down the line, so we'll just make it less confusing. All right. So now we've got this contact message. We actually don't need the triple quotes here. We can make it just a single line because of how we currently have it set up. All right, there we go. And then our string substitution, we can separate that out. Cool. So now we've got our message, we've got our from email, we've got everything set up. So let's go ahead and test this out. Um, site contact, there we go. And let's go into our contact page here. And I'll say hi there and email at some thing.com and say hello and we'll hit submit and it's loading and we've got this error SMTP authentication error so that means that we were not able to authenticate we could not log in username and password were not accepted so that's the error you would see there if we said fail silent being false if we said it was true we could go back and hit submit and it still loads notice that there's nothing that happens though uh, it does take a moment to load, as you might notice. That's because it's actually reaching the Gmail server and trying to log in and trying to send it. Um, so when you have another server, that's what's going to happen. But that's it. That's all you need to actually send email. Of course, there are more complex emails that you can start to send. You can send mass emails. You can send HTML uh, formatted emails versus this being a plain text email. Uh, but you can also just add in a argument for HTML message to make this message work. So you could just come in here and say HTML, HTML message equals to some HTML message and you would set your some HTML, mes HTML message to some HTML code here. So if we did triple quotes and said hello 
and then more triple quotes, this will now send that as your HTML message for their, if, if their email uh, client actually handles HTML messages, that's how you would actually do that too. So those are a few of the app, uh, other attributes. And then you could also do um, attachments if you need. There's all so sorts of things that you can do with email. So there's definitely more to it than just this. Um, and they show a way of using email in a, in a kind of a different way uh, here too. So you can play around with all types of stuff. But what I've found is this right here is pretty much all I need for the majority of stuff that I work with. Um, so if you have any questions on setting up email or doing email, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.